What's your idea of adventure? Something extreme? Or something that's just totally amazing? Get inspired by this group of friends on their journey of discovery all over Australia. These are their tales to tell. Hmm. Um. Well, from the outset, our goal was to climb and ski Mount Ossa and at the same time have an adventure. Now, we didn't climb and ski Mount Ossa, but we definitely had an adventure. The initial plan was to cruise out of Sydney, get the spirit of Tasmania across to Devonport with the vehicles, and then drive as far as we can before climbing up Mount Ossa, which is Tasmania's highest mountain, and skiing down it. Right here. Today we're trying to get in there, but it's been tough. We tried to time climbing and skiing Mount Ossa so that we had a bit of fresh snowfall, but would have it this same weather system dropped a lot of rain in, in the area and there's a lot of flash flooding. Having such severe weather right into our trip is great because it means there's snow up in the mountains, but the approach has just been a nightmare. The tree fell down and it's blocking our track, so we're going to have to do something about it. I don't think we even have reception here to call parks. We kind of thought this might happen with the winds yesterday, but I didn't expect this. We've had about eight or nine trees to cut or move or tow away. We've definitely taken the road less travelled to get here. We get patches of snow like this and then we get patches of sun. It's been an adventure, that's for sure and it's snow all the way up this road and then it's really slowing us down. So we either have to deal with it or we have to come up with a different plan. We've just arrived at the, uh, the Overland track uh, where we're gonna, well, where we were gonna commence the ascent. And now that we're finally here at the trailhead, the trail looks less like a trail and more like a river. The overland track is now the underwater track. But still, we kind of persisted, we still tried. Yeah, we got our packs on and we waded through the water. kind of swam through the rainforest. <laughs> well, we just had pretty much the approach from hell. Literally had to take our shoes off twice to cross creeks. Skis were just hitting the branches at every step and it's just snowing on us. It's all about the effort. It was about the turns, we would just go to the ski resort. Halfway socks, what? Next time I'll wear thongs. They were good in Launceston Mall. It's really hard going. With this much uh, weight on your back and this much snow on the trails, it just, um, it's taking a long time, a really long time. And we're starting to get doubtful whether or not we'll get in there at all. We were threading the needle pretty fine with a uh, pretty intense weather system. So it just took us a long time to make very little distance. And about six and a half hours in, we stopped and had a conversation. And I think at this point there's enough doubt within the group that we should just call it. I was getting tired and things were getting hectic. The slow going and getting there just meant that we, we missed the weather window and it socked back in. And we didn't want to be caught out uh, before this next storm rolled in. We turned back. We turned around and went back down the trail that was so hard to get up. It's been a big day, very humbling day. 
We're on our way out. We pulled back halfway along the trail because we were too heavy, too slow, and we broke trail for like three hours in high weed and snow, and yeah, be happy to get back, I think. Didn't feel good, but it was the right decision. This is called getting washed back into shore. Where you paddle out as far as you can. And then when the waves get too big, you just sort of get washed in. So we're back at the car instead of at the hut. But we got here just before dark, which is really cool because if we were still walking around out there right now, it'd be pretty damn miserable. Yes, dry, warm. It's been a very humbling experience. Uh, Mother Nature is a very powerful thing. You know, it's always a bit demoralizing having to make the decision to turn back. Um, we set out with an objective and we, we didn't get there. But we can just go surfing now. There's always that. Everything was wet. Everything inside our bags was wet. Every lens was wet. Like, we were soaked. So we hung everything up in our hotel room and just got out of there and went to the coast. It's like a two hour drive to the east coast. And um, on that side of Tassie, it was beautiful and sunny, super nice. And we went for a little surf. Probably the first time any of us had smiled. And that was a really nice moment there, just to take the foot off the accelerator and just enjoy being here. Yeah, we made the choice to go to Ben Lamont, um, at least for the beautiful scenery. The road up there is spectacular. And it's actually the second highest point in Tasmania after Mount Ossa. So in a way, we were kind of going for second best. Driving up, you couldn't see anything. It was just foggy. You could sort of make out the side of the road. There was big rock pillars shooting up into the fog. The wind was howling. It was patchy as anything. I think it had rained the night before. We were pretty demoralised after not making Ossa and coming back and it's pretty easy to be negative in that situation. But then a busload of school kids came up and there was no lifts open, nothing was on at Ben Lomond, but they all came and grabbed toboggans and skis and snowboards and just walked out there and for a couple of hours just looked to have the most awesome time just playing in the snow and they were stoked. And boy does that give you a reminder of why we do this in the first place. And sometimes our expectations can get so high and we can get so far ahead of ourselves with what we're trying to do that you forget that it's just awesome to be up there at all. Yeah.